Hey, hey people, Nemesis Tech back with another video. Since Apple recently crossed $2 trillion of market value, beating many companies that trade oil and outvaluing even a plethora of countries, according to Wikipedia's list of countries by total wealth from 2019, it totals 150 countries. Apple races head to head with Austria, Sweden and Belgium when wealth is concerned. Naturally, one could ask how a company can achieve that. The obvious answers, iPhones, Macs and services. Services and phones are not the focus of this channel. So I took it upon myself to dissect the 2020 iMac 27 inch as most popular model in the iMac line and see if the hardware is worth the asking price or if Apple's margins on these machines are exorbitant enough to paint the $2 trillion picture. Not to spoil too much ahead, it does and I promise you the meme of Apple tax is true and scary. And if you see at some point that this video is taken down or I stop making videos altogether, assume that Apple sent an army of lawyers my way and help would be appreciated. Back to the subject, my procedure was fairly straightforward. The iMac is at its core a PC, granted it's an all-in-one and has more in common with a laptop than a tower PC. My approach was as follows. Cover all base aspects of the PC part and look what features could cost extra. I priced them as the aftermarket demands and made expert assumptions for all the special snowflake parts Apple likes to use based on the closest equivalent. These are snowflakes because they are modified versions of existing products made on Apple's special request. This includes, for example, GPUs and the display. What I will not do is go into extra detail to explore what small fans or USB ports would cost as the primary example. USB ports are already covered for in the price tag of the aftermarket motherboard, for instance. As the aftermarket product prices used already come with margins on both the reseller according to medium.com 25% for tech on amazon.com in 2018 and the manufacturer as well as per investopedia.com they claim it's 6.7% in 2018. At the very end I will also take these numbers into account for those of you who care. So let's get started shall we? As the basis we have the iMac 27 inch model from 2020 called A2115. I suspected that margins for Apple would differ based on the spec you buy. So I took the entry spec, iMac and the top spec configured to a point I would suspect many professionals opting for. The purchasing prices would end up being $1800 and $4100 respectively. So let's get into detail with the entry spec model first. This model comes with an Intel i5, 10500, 8 gigs of RAM and a laptop GPU from AMD. Intel lists the 6 core 12 threaded CPU as $192 MSRP. The RAM comes in with $40 from Corsair. It's a kit of 2x4 gigs sodium at laptop speeds. The GPU is one of those special snowflakes I mentioned earlier. It's a super low tier Navi based GPU with 4 gigs VRAM called Radeon Pro W5300 and is only else found in laptops. My estimation for its worth is 250 US dollars. This is based on the Radeon Pro W5500 that has a bigger core, faster clock speeds and double the VRAM retailing for 400 US dollars. Then we have a motherboard and this will be the same on both entry spec and top spec. For this I went with the MSI B460M as it supports all processors in Apple's product lines and has Wi-Fi covers 
audio processing and has all the USB and Ethernet. Then we have the storage and in this machine it's an NVMe SSD with 256 gigs. For the aftermarket I went with the best of the best, Samsung's 970 EVO Plus. In benchmarks Samsung would destroy the Mac's SSD but I didn't want anyone thinking I am unfair to the Mac. It clocks in at 70 US dollars. This marks half of the parts and we are summing in at $645 mid-game. Let's continue with something worth praise, the display. I found Apple's glossy 5K LCD on Alibaba. This would be what the technician replaces broken screens with. It costs $325 and I fully expect Apple paying less. I will not include this at the margin reduction at the end, as strictly speaking this is not retail but instead a source directly from manufacturing part. Next we have Thunderbolt. I know, I know. I said I wouldn't include these small features, but Thunderbolt is something many manufacturers don't care about and that kind of makes it a standout feature of Max. While I suspect that the implementation of two ports costs Apple around $10 because Intel dropped the licensing fees, I will be generous here and include the Rolls Royce of Thunderbolt, the Lightning in Zeus's hand, the fuel of rockets. Gigabyte's Titan Ridge expansion card cost $70 and I will include it in the sum for fairness sakes. As for power, Apple states a total system consumption of around 300 watts for the top spec and I will include a SFX small form factor power supply from Silverstone rated for 450 watts and retails for $75. Last but not least we have the case and obviously there is no aftermarket equivalent but it is just a small aluminium casing and very much unlike general purpose cases. Additionally Apple has been making this casing for over 5 years now where the tooling paid itself 1000 times over as a result I expect them to be dirt cheap for Apple to make. My guesstimate clocks in at $50. That was the last part for the entry spec iMac. Now we total these parts to $1,165. With this, one could assume Apple is pocketing $635, but it gets better. For Apple that is, because we adjust the $1,165 stemming from retail plus the snowflake parts to a building cost for Apple. For this we subtract the display and case, bringing us to $790 just retail portion. From here we can get rid of the margins, don't forget 25% the retailer and 6.7% the manufacturer. After adjustments. I end up with $967. That brings me to a pocketable sum for Apple of $833. That is a profit margin for Apple on the iMac of between 35 and 46 percent depending on either the $635 or the $833 you want to calculate with. That is ludicrous considering other tech manufacturers operate, flourish and grow with 6.7% margins. I was very short from falling off my chair as I saw these numbers work out in the spreadsheet, but the plot only thickens from here on out. If you enjoyed this journalistic masterpiece up until now, consider subscribing and leaving a like. Let's continue with the top spec iMac hitting the wallet with $4,100 including options because I suspected that it will dwarf the previous result. Here the display, case, motherboard, power supply and thunderbolt stays the same as in the entry spec. So what changes? Let's start with the CPU. This again is a snowflake from Apple but at this point it's splitting hairs because it's a 10th gen i9 either way. Officially, the i9-10910 comes in the machine and is a $400 option. Based on the same core count of 10 and base speed of 3.6GHz, the substitute is the i9-10850K, 
with an MSRP of $453. By the way, the 10850K is overclockable and paired with the right motherboard has a higher boost speed out of the box, making it worth more. So consider this a quick $50 extra in Apple's favor. Apple's magic trick does not end here. See, this $400 upgrade is just that, an upgrade. Usually the top spec base configuration at $2300 comes with an i7-10700K. This processor has an MSRP of $374, so you pay full MSRP of the i9 as well as the i7 already included in the base config price. The i7 seems to have disappeared. To make this very clear, you pay Apple the $374 i7 hidden in the base price and full MSRP of the i9, but only get the i9. I promised you this would be juicy and it would seem that Apple is performing some kind of daylight robbery and that nearly 100% markup gets dwarfed by the RAM option. First of all, the audacity of this company to give you 8 gigs of RAM in a machine they charge you $2300 at base config for is astounding. Well, as this should represent a high-end machine for heavy-duty work, I opted for 32 gigs of the good stuff. They charge $600 for it. Seems legit, right? Considering that 32 gigs of premium sodium in a 4x8 gig kit costs $100 at retail. No, this is not legit. This is daylight robbery at its best. But they didn't stop at your purse. They took your jeans, shirt and pants to boot. Please buy the retail kit as RAM is the only thing you can upgrade yourself. Let's continue with the GPU. As mentioned before, it's a snowflake, but this is one of two things I consider okay practice in this machine. Unconfigured, the GPU would have been a Radeon Pro 5500 XT with 8 gigs of RAM. The option I added is the $500 Radeon Pro 5700 XT with 16 gigs. As this is an Apple specific part, the most similar GPU on the market is the Radeon Pro 5700 with 8 gigs, retailing for 800 US dollars. See, VRAM is not like RAM. Implementing 16 gigs instead of 8 on a GPU is in fact worth $150 extra. The same core but with faster clock speeds and I could justify $200 extra cost bringing my estimation for the 5700 XT 16 gig to $1000. That brings me to system storage. The base config gives you 512 gigabytes of NVMe SSD. I opted for 1 terabyte for $200 extra. My aftermarket equivalent is again the Samsung 970 EVO Plus with matching capacity. $190 retail and both are fast. Still, Samsung slightly edges out Apple's SSD and speed. What I failed to mention is that Apple solders SSDs onto the motherboard and encrypts them with the T2 chip, which means no data recovery or upgrading whatsoever. To end the list of parts on a good note, 10 gig Ethernet for $100 extra. Totally worth it if one wants or needs 10 gig networking. The aftermarket solution is there and costs $90 from QNAP AOK -OK pricing. Now what does that bode for the margins? The sum of all parts on my list comes to $2446, leaving a profit of $1654. Pretty hefty if you ask me, but we should not forget the adjustments, right? Case and display subtraction leaves $2071 to take the retailer's 25 and the manufacturer's 6.7% margins out of a manufacturing cost of $1928. I told you, didn't I? Juice just keeps coming. If you think Apple is spending $2446 to build this iMac, you get to keep margins of 40%. On the other hand, if you think of Apple as the manufacturer and seller in one, the margins are a mind-numbing 53%. Don't forget, in this calculation I was giving Apple boons left, right and center. 
Also, I kind of had to go with this, as if bulk purchases wouldn't give big discounts. And Apple was not playing their sheer size to discount the suppliers even further because I simply don't have those numbers. So it's safe to assume 53% is not the whole story. And it really is not the full story. To Apple's credit, this is only the hardware. I did not include any marketing development work or anything from the long list of things they have to spend on. Now all that still seems like a drop in the ocean at this point. At the end of the day, my point is that they make tons of money on Macs, phones, tablets, accessories, services and even repairs. At least now you know what it costs to build a Mac. That brings us to the end of the video. If you stayed this long, it's likely you enjoyed the ride. Again, likes, subs and shares are much appreciated. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.